Now for the uh, penultimate award of the evening, the International Journalist of the Year Award, sponsored by Concern Worldwide UK. This is for an established journalist who has made the most outstanding contribution to international journalism throughout the year. Let's have a look at examples of their work. Sue Lloyd Roberts. Sue Lloyd Roberts' journalistic career has focused on giving a voice to the voiceless around the world. Last year, she investigated female genital mutilation in Egypt, interviewing both perpetrators and victims to powerful effect. It's a village where Muslims live side by side with Christians, and both communities practice FGM. <laughs> I've had problems in my sexual relationship with my husband because of it. And so when Naveen explained about the health complications and how it's not part of religious faith, I was convinced. I now don't want my daughter circumcised. But the Muslim mother next door is not. The two older girl cousins have been mutilated and her 11-year-old daughter will be next. Ian Pennell. In a foreign news environment dominated this year by coverage of Syria, Ian Pennell's reporting from the country was vivid and immersive, conveying all too clearly the horrors of the fighting. <laughs> Ducking behind a wall for cover, a fighter shouts to move. Pointing to snipers behind us. Well, the rebels have now moved up because the government's been trying to push into this area. It's a very confused situation. We know there are snipers all around here because it's an urban area the sounds ring out and what you can't tell is which direction they're actually coming from as you can see the rebels are incredibly tense Stuart Ramsey Stuart Ramsey produced powerful reports from around the Middle East adding a layer of context to breaking news stories in Yemen, he shone a light on the slow burn famine that has resulted from regional insecurity, examining the impact on the civilian population. Squalid camps now home to hundreds of thousands fleeing fighting in the north and south of the country. Over 10 million people, nearly half the population is going hungry. Food prices doubled in a year. There's no end in sight. The insecurity caused by fighting in various parts of Yemen is one of the reasons why malnutrition is such a big problem. The United Nations estimates that 300,000 children under the age of five are in grave risk of dying from malnutrition and related illnesses. Indeed, they say that whatever they do this year, tens of thousands will die for certain. The jury thought that this year's nominees entered some outstanding reports on complex topics rarely covered in such a considered way. The work of each of these three was of an exceptionally high standard, making it very difficult to select a winner. To present the award, please welcome Rose Caldwell, UK Executive Director, Concern Worldwide. <laughs> Concern Worldwide works in two dozen of the world's poorest and most vulnerable countries. We work to alleviate poverty and to improve the lives of some of the world's most vulnerable people. But at the heart of this, we believe that we must address the issue of hunger. And we, we do this in two ways, through our programming work, where we reached about 23 million people in 2012. But we also recognize the need to influence policy makers and decision makers. And this is why in 2013 we have joined forces with about 200 other civil society organizations in the Enough Food for Everyone campaign because it is one of the world's most solvable problems. We, this is about our seventh year of, of supporting the One World Media Awards, recognizing the huge role that the media play in raising issues. And we would urge the media in 2013 
to help us draw attention to the 870 million people who go hungry, whilst the, the, the most, world's most powerful people meet in Northern Ireland in the next, next month. Um, the winner of the award is Sue Lloyd Roberts. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I've been reporting on the developing world and human rights, I think, for over 20 years, and there are a lot of media award ceremonies that take place in the UK every day, but for anyone who, like myself, has specialised um, in this area, this is the most special and the most important. Thank you. Um, I think I'm almost as old as you, John. I, too, remember cans of film. Um, you give yourself an injustice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take a special thank you to Tony, um, Tony Jolliffe, who was the cameraman and edited the films which were submitted for this award. And um, I want to tell a, a small anecdote that um, those of you who are in the field will warm to. Tony and I were in the Nile filming the um, film on female genital mutilation in Egypt that you saw the uh, clip of. And that inevitable call came from the news desk that um, there had been a football riot in Alexandria in northern Egypt and would we abandon female genital mutilation, which really wasn't a terribly important story anyway. It was always the second most important story we'd gone to do um, because they wanted us to go and up north to um, make a report on the, the football riots. I'm sure many of you share um, my experience that news editors never have a map in front of them. I think the, the distance from where we were on the Nile was a good eight hours drive to Alexandria. It would have been quicker to send someone from London with that beside. Anyhow, my male cameraman, who had got stuck into filming female genital mutilation, we just filmed one of the perpetrators, said, I'm not going. He said that um, if boys routinely had their sensitive bits lopped off them between the ages of four and 14, there would be no other story in this part of the world. <laughs> And female genital mutilation was the only story we were prepared to cover that day. So we stuck with it. There have been other references to this tragedy um, this evening, to female genital mutilation. So I hope there will be many more reports until it is totally obliterated. But meanwhile, thank you very much for this. I'm, I'm so proud. Thank you.